where my bad set. What's up, Alphas? What's good? It's your boy Nico Williams. We back with another episode of Keep It 99. How you doing today, Lay Alpha? I'm blessed. Birthday week. I was going live on YouTube for my birthday, but then I didn't feel like it. So y'all got a win. It's your show. birthday. You do what you want to. Joe was on vacation, so we didn't have no show yesterday. So forgive us. Forgive us. We, anyway, we need to try out Friday anyway. So what's new that out Friday? Like and subscribe. Follow. Hit that follow button. Google Hype. Google Podcast, Anchor, Apple Music, whatever listening platform you are on right now. Hit that follow button, please. 99 Media. Absolutely, man. Make sure y'all do that, man. Um, you know, I think we got a solid team right here, but, you know, it, free agency is going on in the NBA, man. I just want to jump right into that, man. It's been a lot of moves, and I'm happy for my Los Angeles Lakers. I'm seeing on Facebook right now. The Lakers may be what brings the NBA fan verse, NBA Twitter verse, uh, Don Cheadle in the flesh from Space Jam, just brings the whole universe together because I'm seeing people saying, um, will the Lakers fan base have me now? Okay, will they have me now? I know I said some things in the past, but what they have me now. Um, a lot of it, I feel like, has to do with Carmelo being there. I mean, a lot of it has to do. There's a lot of OG-ish type of guys that join the Lakers, such as Dwight Howard, Carmelo, Russell, Russell Westbrook is there, of course. Um, we had, uh, who, who else? Uh, Malik Monk. Uh, Kendrick Ellington Nunn. is there. Kendrick, Kendrick Nunn. Nunn was an interesting pickup. I mean, uh, Schroeder's days are all but numbered at this point. <laughs> uh, okay. Can we get Buddy High? But um, I don't know how much, how much, I wonder how much Schroeder was getting paid this year. But at any rate, um, Buddy Reza High, back. like he's not for like, oh, Trevor Reza. And there just actually was a great, um, a, a great skit that just came out from our homeboy, Mark Phillips, and the rest of RDC mm-hmm. squad about, um, go check it out, man. But basically, he's just escorting people out and letting them know what they did on their way out. <laughs> Shout out to KCP. He said, dang, Brian, I was, I was balling, though. He said, hey, man, look, man, go ball at the District of Columbia. <laughs> Shout out to him showing some respect for KCP because he is a dog. But also, uh, he stopped Ariza and Dwight Howard on the way out the uh, on the way out the vehicle. To say, play like it's 09 or you'll be gone. <laughs> I, I don't know if that's asking a lot, but, uh, man, what you think about, about A, obviously the Lakers did their thing. We, we, we're, we're, we're here for that. We love that. We, we love our Lakers, and we love apparently at least one person on that team because they picked up everybody from everywhere. And then also there were other, you know, other other moves like LaMelo goes, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh What's that boy name is? Lonzo? It's, it's not me. Lonzo. I'm sorry. Lonzo goes to the Chicago Bulls, the home that Michael Jordan built, the place that Michael Jordan built while he has a youngster, LaMelo, being um, uh, rookie of the year for the team that Michael Jordan owns. It's just a beautiful story that I feel like LeVar Ball is, is, is writing right now. Um, also, we have Miami making a couple of moves. Um, Kyle Lowry, I believe, is going. That's a lot of different moves. So first off, let's talk about the best moves, the Lakers. And then also, I want your thoughts on some of these more obscure moves. Uh, so so uh, take it away, Zell May. And good to see you. Happy happy birthday one let's more go. time. I made, my, I made my boy a video, man. I made him a special video. I, I, put a, I, I made him a special video. It's nice. It's, it's, it was nice. It was from the heart. Follow overall 99 Media Instagram. That's in my link tree. So just go follow that and you'll see. Why not? Why just follow Joe? Joe, it was on Joe's. I didn't, I think I shared it in the post so you won't see it no more. But just go to Joe page. Follow me. It's over there in the corner over there. So, um, but yeah. Absolutely. I want the Lakers fans to know they are renting me for a year. <laughs> oh, for one year. Yes. Which, cool. which, fan, which, which one brought, who brought you, who brought you to Laker Nation? Everybody who brought knows, you to Laker Nation? Everybody, bro, if you watch this show, you know I'm a Mellow fan. It's the 76ers and Mellow, and it's been like that since 2000. Well, 76 ers since 2000. Well, 99 with the 76ers and Mellow since 2003. So. Mellow that was your choice when they got like when it was between when everybody was choosing a side. It was Dwayne Wade, it was Mellow, and it was LeBron. And most people went with obviously LeBron. But 
No, I was choosing. You, you, you I, went the mellow place. I you chose, went the mellow way. I had to find somebody after Jordan and AI got old. So I still love AI. So you know, I thought you was about to say I had to I was thinking like I was thinking like Jordan and Carmelo just came off a championship. <laughs> I thought that's why you chose. Oh no. No, <laughs> uh, I picked Melo back into 03. I had to pick AI. It was AI, always AI. Every player. Then another cornrow brother came up. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the cornrow brothers, man. So Shout out to the cornrow brothers. So I had to go pick. I had to pick my cornrow yeah. brother, and then he a hooper. He a baller. He got that dog in him. So I like that dog. And even if him and AI didn't so far haven't won a championship, so we got to root for him to get one. Uh, I'm taking a note about can you be a hooper and a baller? We'll we'll talk about yeah, that in a little yeah, bit yeah, later. Yeah. But yeah, shout out to them. Kendrick Nunn was probably the, out of all them, the surprise Kendrick Nunn was probably the biggest get because for a long time I questioned what the backup point guard was going to look like. I'm like, oh, who going to play this backup point guard position? I don't know. And, and we needed a shooter. And unfortunately, Kendrick Nunn um, is a 40% three-point shooter. Melo last year was 44%. Ellerton, 41. Bunch of 40% to go around Westbrook. Melo, I mean Westbrook, LeBron, and AD. So you got a bunch of forty percent free three point shooters, a bunch of veterans too. So ain't like Joe Harris. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so. I'm gonna be the devil's advocate. What if there's a multiverse where Russell Westbrook is the best player in the world, and this is the exact team that he needs? To succeed just something to think about because there's a multiverse where russell westbrook <laughs> is the best player in the world chasing the ring and if you look at him run around and do what he does and try and get all these assists man i i'm i'm thinking man russ might be 20 and 20 this year that's my opinion. yo man russ shout out to russ um it's yo i saw memes about this we gotta talk about these memes i saw okay. a meme that literally said this team would be undefeated if this was 2011. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Seriously. Literally, like this was if this was 09, this team would literally be undefeated. Because first off, Melo was in the Western Conference final. The White versus LeBron. So where he don't Tuckalo was taking over. So this is an NBA live all-star <laughs> team at this point. NBA live. All star team, shout to EA, man. Yeah, and the only reason this not, team, not all, shout out to Blizzard, shout out to EA. All the reason this team is not a hundred percent is because they are very old. <laughs> this team is very old. Melo 37, LeBron 36, the White 35, Trevor Reza 36. I saw, I forgot, Marcus All 35. I don't know why Marcus. Uh, I'll go back. Spain some, told you. Just, Spain basically told you. Let it go, my guy. I'm sorry. I love Marcus. He's a Hall of Famer, but French Hall of Famer, but Spain so didn't put still, you on the court. So we're still going with Marcus. Okay, fine. <laughs> he about to be one of the ones that's mad that he don't get no clock. <laughs> got the white back. So you got the white AD might play some center a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, move him center to try to run a little small ball. Um, so you're gonna have small ball at times, probably with Melo, Russ, LeBron, none. Probably a little small ball in that case. And they ain't even small mm. because Melo and LeBron are not little. <laughs> They're not small people. I think you end up suffering defensively, but offensively, I mean, it's nasty. Well, it, it has the potential to be nasty. I'm not saying like go to state. Melo be the only defensive liability in that team, but I'm gonna say LeBron probably is too, man. I'm gonna oh, be you're gonna real get LeBron you. But AD, you, uh, yeah. AD, none, none a little dog. So I think LeBron is the king of let me send you to the center. I think he, I think he'll let you do. I think he he puts his hand up for shooters. He does put his hand up for shooters, but like he will let you go to the basket and just be and then get mad at you because and get mad at the center because he ain't do nothing. But to be fair, Kendrick Nunn is a was a huge pickup because I'm like if LeBron hurt. Who's going to be the playmaker beside Westbrook when he go out? But now you got Kendrick Nunn, and I'm like, okay, okay. We can, we can deal now. And he what do you know about Malik Monk? People are pretty excited about that pickup. I mean, we know he about sh- Wayne Ellington. We fought, know he can shoot. He's 42% from three, and that's that's about it. <laughs> then that corner be wide open. Let us hit you. Get this wide open shot and knock it down. That's all you got to do. 
If you don't, we'll put Trevor Ariza in. So Trevor still got some dog in him. He still can play some defense. So that's that's nice to have. I think that we brought Dwight back. I believe we brought him back to bother Aiden. We we and we're gonna try his mentality next year. And I think they brought Dwight. Uh, I think they brought uh Dwight to kind of bother uh what's that boy name and Joker we get to, to bother Joker a he little did bit two years ago. But, so and Dwight what, what the white will very much foul. And when he foul, you feel it. <laughs> yeah, he hey, and he's on a mission. He lost it. He lost his fiance. Remember how she was trotting around all in the bubble, walking out, <laughs> and she left the White Howard job. And look, I thought I was on Have You Heard. Make sure y'all tune in to Have You Heard whenever the hell I put it out when Wait I feel for like. DJ Washington. Oh, oh my. Is this? No, are we keeping? Are we saving this? Is that, are we saving this for. What's we'll the we'll we'll save this for what's new ninety nine? Yeah, yes, come on Friday. So PJ Washington, uh, boosting the baby situation gonna be more involved in it. So that that be Friday. Like and subscribe. Follow, hit that follow button. Hit that. But I just <laughs> Dwight lost his girl. Like she's young. They were engaged, but like she's young, and she's she she's she's bad, and she got Jordan contracts. Shout and to you, she, Cooper, bro. That's that's. Hey, man, Tia Cooper right did that. <laughs> uh, Dwight might have gave her the rest of the rest of the superpowers, but that could be his kryptonite this year because boy, ain't nothing like losing the one you love. But yeah, man, it's a lot going on there. But like, like let's 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 go. We we talk a lot about the West Coast. Um, I know you heard the story about um, Paul George. We just want to throw you out, throw that out there real quick. Russell Westbrook called Kawhi, and then Kawhi called. Um, Call PG and PG was like, "Hey, that Russ is my guy. I couldn't leave him." And Kawhi was like, "Oh no, 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 no! He just called me and said I'll leave." So that's just a little bit of tea for y'all. I just want y'all to know that that Russ called to to to, to cheat on Paul George and Kawhi used that to get Paul George. But we we'll throw that out there. That is what. But let's take it to the let's take it to the Midwest. Chicago, Chicago made a few moves. They speaking of the Lakers, they took Caruso. Because the Lakers said we're not matching thirty, we're not doing that. And but we love you, but we're not paying you thirty-seven million. They got so Mac Chicago. Now. They got Mac. We got Mac out here getting steals and and one. Best Lakers. So, so so they're all they're all saying that all the memes are saying that the new goat is is Caruso in Chicago, but we all know that. That it, uh, Alonzo Ball is a hundred percent gonna be the man, and I think that he's gonna make a big difference in Chicago. Uh, what it? you think about what? But I think he's gonna make a huge difference. He was a very good uh, player. The, and, the Rosen in shot down now. Yeah, Demar Derozan, Lonzo, Zach Levine, Caruso, take a back seat. Kobe White. I'm like, bro, get rid of guards. <laughs> Why do you need so many guards? What is going on? So my hold on, here's my question to you then. Here's my question. DeMar DeRozan had the Spurs as a franchise to himself. He did not put up any kind of like superstar numbers or anything. Lonzo has you Zion had to t- himself. <laughs> but but Lonzo improved all across the board and he has sure. nothing to do but improve. I, I believe that Lonzo is going to grace the cover of NBA 2K one day. I think he's going to be that great of a player. And Leandro, hey, yo, pick for Leandro. He finally in the league. <laughs> playing them summer Leandro league. is playing in the summer league for the uh, the, the Bobcats um, farm West team. Game, so hell for two months. <laughs> Leandro is getting his shot. He's getting his shot. And I think LaMelo, LaMelo may have had something to do with that. I'm rookie of the year. Can you at least let my brother in camp, please? Yeah, so you're in the summer or league. At, get or I'm going to request a trade. Yeah, but my... So, but That's my, exciting. But Chicago got guard oriented, so I think they're gonna make a trade. Uh, Lonzo, DeRozan, Zach Levine, and Caruso, and also got Kobe White. I'm like, I don't know how. Yeah. Like these are not like yeah. like these are not like big guards you can move to forward outside of maybe DeRozan. Like these are like six three, well six five and below. Like you can't just move them to forward. Somebody gotta go. Yeah. So is that like a six who, seven guard? This ain't Luca guard type. This is small guards. 
Yeah, yeah. So you got five of them. Somebody ain't gonna play. Two of them might gotta go. Does Caruso start, or is he this like the off the bench energy guy for the city of Chicago now? Who he start? You got Lonzo, DeRozan, and Levine. Caruso, I don't see where you fit. Uh, I think they might move. Is Levine really a? Is Le, is Levine really a three? And I apologize for my internet. My internet's been like crazy all day, and I apologize for that. Um, but I'm gonna do the best that I can to to circle through it. But man. What what is what about how do the gangs of Chicago feel about this about Caruso coming through? Is are they like is that going to be the new thing? Like I can't wait to hear hear a drill rapper just go in and have a have a dope a dope lyric about Caruso. <laughs> you know we don't listen to drill music. Well, Joe might Joe might be into that, bro. But yeah, they might. I do I do like King Louis. I do like King Louis. He's he's a very fun artist to listen to. But- I don't. Caruso is not starting. Uh, he gonna be the energy bench guy. He got look. He got more money. He got that check. So, shout to him. Very guard oriented. Uh, it's gonna be a fight to play. I think they might put DeRozan at three. You know, he ain't really a three. He's undersized at three, but he gonna have to play it. Zach Levine shorter than he is, so so Zach Levine gotta play the two. I guess on this. Yeah, he had to play the two and Lonzo play the one, but Lonzo can switch to the, the guard the two because he's bigger. Yeah. So yeah. He gonna, but Lonzo has to play point guard because it's basically what he is. He's the only pure, like pure point guard. So it's gonna be interesting. They're gonna have to make they're gonna have to trade Kobe White, I think. So Kobe White, I think, is gonna be traded soon. Look forward to that. I don't see how he can just play on their roster unless he's just gonna be but they might can do that lineup, but it's gonna be weird. You stun his growth, and I don't think that's fair to him. All right, you know, and not every team stays still. You know, we even had some other people that because because I mean, if you're the Warriors, I bet you feel very disrespected right now. You have to feel disrespected. Nobody's nobody's worried about you. Everybody's worried about the Lakers, the Clippers, a little bit of uh, Denver, I guess, but. The Warriors are making moves too. They they're still there, and let's not forget Clay could be back, and that might have been a better team with Clay last year. That would have been a dangerous team, I think. And Curry held them to do what he did. But but I believe we mentioned in the pre production meeting. I believe you said Otto Porter's going there. Yeah, Otto Porter, a scorer, legit scorer, can get legit you, bucket can get you thirty if you got to. So that's a legit scorer. They had to probably they had to get on him by defense, but. That's a great addition to me. With Clay adding more shooting, can get to the rack. Otto Porter got defense issue, but if you put him in the right system, I think he can shine. He's one of those teams that I think an underrated move. Another underrated move, JaVel McGee to Phoenix. People don't people don't realize that. That's a very underrated move. Why? Because when the finals came and Giannis was taking it to Aiden, Aiden got in foul trouble. Sarek got injured and Kaminsky got ate alive. He got bullied. So having right. JaVel McGee, right. So, right. so having JaVel McGee is that backup bear. Can you keep that size done? Get you running. He'll probably love playing with Chris Paul. <laughs> so so Kevin, that JaVel McGee, and you know Chris Paul will be on JaVel McGee like LeBron was, so he'll play good. <laughs> so that's a big right. pickup. That's a big pickup. I'm hearing Spencer Dimwitty is probably heading to Washington. I don't know how much of an improvement that is, but if you if Kuzma do what he say he can do and get 25 a game, <laughs> I'm I'm this is my last like my last little bit that I'm going to give to Kuzma. Here you go, boy. You got your own team now. Tell us what you can do. Yeah, and I'm here for that. So that was, that's a big move. Um, Chicago move. I don't think put them nowhere. The Golden State move, it really didn't do nothing to them because the biggest move for Golden State is simply one thing or two things. Wiseman's growth and Klay Thompson. If if those mm-hmm. two happen, they're a contender, regardless. Mm-hmm. Correct, correct. So if correct. Wiseman go the way Aiden went, because uh, Steve Kerr said, yo, what Aiden from his first year to his second year, 20 and 15 in the playoffs. If Wiseman mm-hmm. gets you 20 and 15, 
with Clay back? I, I, I don't care who you is. I don't care if you're the Lakers, Clippers, whoever. <laughs> Phoenix, I would not want that play the team because Clay is a walking 60 with 10 dribbles. That's what's crazy. People talk about Clay injuries. Incredible. I'm like, this man didn't dribble and score 60. He don't have to run. <laughs> and, then, and then we'll lock you up. That's the thing, like, like you, I, oh, I hate when somebody just shoot them threes and then they hit bad shot threes and then, <laughs> then they come and clamp you down. Oh, that's I, ugly. I think Clay defense myself, but that scoring ain't so. I'm not worried about that. And ultimately, we got to give a shout out to the team. I think probably overall improved the best because I'm not gonna say the Lakers improved the best because the Lakers improvement clearly just depends on how healthy they did. <laughs> AD healthy, they are a way better team because when he went out against Phoenix, it was almost over. So AD come back healthy, they're a contender. With AD healthy last year, they was a contender. With him and LeBron healthy, contender. They won the champ. If you don't know, they won the championship the year before, so of course they contended. But the team that improved the most because they were absolute trash in the playoffs to me is the Miami Heat because that team is a dog now. Do I think they're winning? No. Brooklyn, the Bucks. I don't think they're better than either one of them, even with the takeaway in addition, because if Giannis grow to the way he growed in the finals game six, they ain't win anyway. But and dogs like PJ Tucker. Markeith That was interesting. They, they, it's a dog and a champion. Mark, uh, shot, shot, shot. Nothing but dogs. Look, that's gonna boys. be a tough that's gonna be a that's gonna be a tough, tough matchup for anybody every night. Yo, they just gonna try to, and then with Jimmy already a dog, you just gonna have people try to bully you the whole game. They got, by the way, people don't realize Miami missed Jay Crowder a lot because he had that dog in him too, and he went to Phoenix. So they looked, they needed, they needed an extra dog, and PJ Tucker is that dog. <laughs> yeah, and what what they gonna do to Tyler Hero? Ooh, what 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 if they what if he walk out with like do rags and stuff like? <laughs> With that, with that locker room, bro, hey, with that locker room, Tyler Harrell going to be a different person. Marky Morris out there. But he did get a bag, too, by the way. Oh, Marky Morris. Oh, yeah, man. Don't Hey, ain't nobody trying to go to Miami. And I think that's going to change the culture. Like, like it pretty much is the culture of that's, Miami. That's as Pat like, Riley style like of team right historically. here. This is what Pat Riley loves. This is Too bad they ain't gonna get away with no crazy, uh, crazy fouls. Now, if this was a team in the '90s, they might win the championship. But uh, by the way, they're calling all them fouls. As we talking, um, we gotta talk about the Olympics in a minute because we gotta move on. We've been talking about the Lakers and them for 20 minutes, but before we move on, the league is changing the rules. All that little flopping, forcing fouls will not be called according to Adam Silver. So, a little more like FIBA. So we're gonna a lot of these players gonna be exposed. <laughs> But you can't get to that line. I hear you on that, and I just want to say one thing. I just want to give a big shout out to Mike Conley for for getting that seventy two and a half million from Utah. The man is a bag getter. Shout out to the home team, Indianapolis stand up, Indiana stand up. Mm -hmm. We love it. Yeah. So, well, we got Team USA. They appear to be on track. The Team US Durant's. I mean USA. <laughs> beat spain yesterday after giving up 38 to ricky rubio who looked like michael jordan by himself playing against team usa i even saw him go down the court in a fast break and block Bam adam by him one-on-one -on -one. yeah 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 they you know they, they got this thing called the undisputed segment um predictor and it was gonna say, and they, they retweeted where he had 38 points, and then it was gonna be like, Are international players treated unfairly in the NBA? <laughs> and I'm like, Man, I don't know, maybe <laughs> they might be. Let, Ru let Rubio shoot in Cleveland. Yo, he got the chance. Ricky, ain't nobody else on that. Ricky <laughs> Rubio was Ricky Rubio just showed out for free, like literally for free. Uh, but Spain was number two, and I'm glad our boys got. I'm glad our boys. I guess they're. I guess they're doing whatever they're doing. Um, so we we excited to. Patty Mills that, got that they, thirty-two. That they, that, 
Rubio got I'm just excited 30. that they're hooping and they're balling at the same time because I believe he can do that. If we play Slovenia in the gold medal game, how many points Luke again? First of all, I just wanted to I, I just wanted you to know that the Olympics is like some parts of it are probably pretty much rigged, like the NBA is that they say. And somehow Luca's gonna have to Luca has to go to the gold medal game. He has to. <laughs> Luca is not lost since he joined the team. 17 and 0, right? Like 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 at like what 14 years old? <laughs> like he he joined the international team. Yeah, so he's 17 and 0 since joining the team. The team usually don't make the Olympics, but they won it without him this year, which led them to go because Luke will be playing in the NBA season, so he can't help the national team. So that's why you haven't seen him in the Olympics. But this is first year there. Usually they don't. He don't have his partner going Dragic, who is rumored to go to him. So looking forward to that. But Durant took over, and this team seemed to go the way Durant goes. So if Durant get hot, they hot. If he yeah. cold, they seem to be off and. As indicated by that Spain game, he started off very slow. When he got hit, when he started hitting three, the whole team started hitting three. So it appears that Durant is the leader of that team. Yeah, uh, did like they went on like a crazy run when Durant sat down, like 14 2, 14 4 run. And then KD comes back in the game and then they go on their own like 14, 16 point run to tie it up by the half. Like KD, the world is watching you right now. So. Hey, it's they'll say the at the end of the day, they'll say if they lose, it's Kevin Durant's fault. Like, how would it hurt to be like they say I'm the best player in the world and we lost in the world games? That's 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 the hell of a narrative. And I'll I will run with that narrative narrative if that happens. But if he wins it, shout out to him. <laughs> but to be fair to LeBron, they talking about LeBron Olympic team one. I'm like, to be fair, LeBron had KD. LeBron had Melo. LeBron had Westbrook and James man. Harden and Chris Paul. This is a team full and of Kobe Bryant. This team full of hoopers, <laughs> not really basketball players. My guy, <laughs> they look like they be so lost after that. I'm just saying. Yeah, these is a, these are these. This is yes. The Olympics is our our prime example of what a hooper versus a basketball player is. A hooper is just he just go get you buckets. That he just hooper. go get you buckets. Rarely be a hooper. I don't know how good a basketball player they are. They hoop us. They're not people that we that we've just sat there and been like, oh, he's just picking the defense apart. No, that he was busting people's ass, <laughs> hand in his face, two people on him. Like them is that, those are hoopers. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago. I think we finally have our answer. Yeah. Uh, Team USA is uh, is is letting us know that we have hoopers, not necessarily always have basketball players. Give it a round as a basketball player who can hoop. Yes, Draymond yes. Green, yeah, yeah. Yep. Bas- Draymond Green is a basketball player. Everybody else on the team moves. Tatum yeah. is becoming a basketball player. Uh, what about what about Dame Time? What is he? What do you call? Oh. What do you consider him? Is he a hoop? He's a hooper. He got to be a hoop. He a clutch hooper. <laughs> yeah, he a hooper. I'm starting. I'm starting to differentiate now. I'm seeing what y'all talking about. Tim Duncan lead his team in championships. Too. These dudes just get buckets. So, get buckets. So it's a difference. I understand. Steph is a basketball player who can. Who, who can to be, Yeah, so he's a mixture. He get buckets, but he also play make. And I'm realized that that's the difference between him and Dane because they very similar. Steph is more of a playmaker. Steph can go out there and get you 15 assists if he got to. So that's the difference. So that's 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 the little thing that I thought was gonna be a joke, but when I thought about it, it made sense. <laughs> that Levine, Bradley Bill, those types of hoopers. Devin Booker and Jason Tatum looking like they turned it into basketball players. So, what are you going to say about that? Um, speaking of, Texas and Oklahoma joins the SEC. What's your thoughts about this? Um, finally, we got the we got the real we got the real battle going on. Everybody knows it's the South against Texas. That's <laughs> like it, but 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 also. Like, it just, all this sounds better. These are historical southern states. They should, like, it's, it, it ends at Texas. But, uh, but uh, like, Oklahoma, as you go towards the east. Oklahoma's kind of not southeast. I'll give Austin a little bit. Like, I'll maybe get Austin the edge of the southeast. 
But technically, I don't count that because Missouri is Missouri almost Midwest. I don't know how in the world they got stuff. But why would you not want a Texas versus Florida game every year? Why would you not? Like that's a big game. Texas, uh, Texas, Georgia. Uh, I mean, just throwing Texas again, like everybody, 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 all these states hate each other, like in a sense. They're the most southern state. They're the most southern style. Because if you think about it, each of these states has their own culture. And it's so crazy because they're all so close together. But like Texas has that mixture. You know, you got the Louisiana uh, uh, influence. And then then you just got the straight up Texas is Texas. And then Florida is just going to be Florida. Georgia is Georgia. Like Mississippi, Mississippi, like Alabama, Alabama, Texas versus Alabama. I mean, these, these are going to be games that put people in the seats and get ratings because these are historical programs. And it's it's from it's from our nation's um, first capital, the South. So with that being said, man, I'm, I love it. I love it. Uh, Oklahoma, like I said, you're right. I think their only real uh, rival would be like maybe Missouri or maybe be uh, – um, you know, obviously it's going to be Texas, but I'm here for it. I like this inclusion. Get out of the Big 12. The, let the Big 12 turn into a, a mid-level, a mid-major division uh, program, if you will, they like the out, MAC man. or something like that. They yeah, it's, it's a wrap, out. man. Them, 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 them teams getting out of there. Them teams are getting out of there. Um, this means, what this means for the college football playoffs, we're probably starting to get 12 teams. They probably have some big playoffs that's stupid just to get more money because this is 100% a money grab because I don't know. SEC technically don't need them. Oklahoma and Texas does, do get more money, but everybody get more money, which means everybody happy. Players are going to start getting more money. By the way, SEC contract is up with the ESPN in 2024 in which the, the year they're supposed to move. So I want people to be aware of that. I want people to be aware that 2024 will be the year that they move, that the SEC contract is up. And according to the Big 12 commissioner, according to the Big 12 commissioner, the SEC, I mean, ESPN try to interfere and try to convince Texas and Oklahoma to join. And they talking about y'all gonna get big money if y'all join. But why? Because they need money. They need money. It's, why are you saying they need money? Who needs money? Rich people, they need more money. No, man, no, you can't say need money and put it in that context as if like, no, nah, we just need money or we going under type of thing. No, like, nah, no, what you mean? Explain no, yourself. When you talk to rich people, you understand. It's a different. They need money. So they want more money. So adding two of the biggest programs in the world, sports wise, in every sport, brings money. Oklahoma in basketball, gymnastics, Texas in baseball. Not only football, but they bring money. So SEC gonna pay for all that. Let's go. Give us more I money. Say, I can. I mean, for the longest, the Big Twelve has really just been thriving off of Texas and Oklahoma all these years. So I mean, all you got, all I gotta say, listen to this. After Oklahoma and Texas, the last place in the SEC team, Arkansas, make more money than third. <laughs> so they were making all the money, nobody else was. So, and then they, like yeah, I said, it's about I, money, and SEC, like, I take more money. We ain't worried about I mean, Texas if, if, at all. If, Oklahoma. If every they get if every them. every SEC game, no matter what S who who versus who makes a lot of money, any of these games can be primetime games, man, in the SEC. So yeah. yeah, and then you add Texas to the fold, Oklahoma to the fold. That's gonna be interesting. Now I don't know if the Oklahoma boys can really stand up though like that. That'd be all right. They're gonna be for that Georgia. I don't team. know if they can run with the Florida Cats. They, I think that they can probably run with Georgia. That'd be the they can Georgia probably run with, Missi with the Mississippi team. They'll run. But, They'll be on this side anyway. They don't have to deal with Alabama now. Alabama go east. They're the most eastern team, Alabama and Auburn, so they'll go east in this situation. So basically, well, hold on. they get to avoid but, Georgia, Florida, Alabama, Auburn. They just have to worry about LSU and Mississippi team. 
So Oklahoma probably be good on this set. Mm-hmm. Hey, we, 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 don't count we'll the Mississippi see. team. They, Ole Miss always got a good th- throwing game, passing game. I don't know why they always do them. So look at that. And they definitely are. Uh, uh, Oklahoma, um, Ohio, uh, Mississippi State is on its way. They're always a scrappy team, and Ole Miss, they always going to be in the in the game. They, so, get, they got you know. receivers, dog. All I got to say is DK Metcalf, A.J. Brown played together. Laquan, yeah. Trey Will, Dante Moncrief, all top third-round pick. They, uh, Ebron from the New York Giants, they just had a tight end go in the first round. They had a receiver go in the second round. They passed the game. Their quarterback is ranked third overall in the Heisman vote with fourth overall Heisman, third overall quarterback. Coming in this year, pass the game mm-hmm. always on the and shout out to the Grove voted number one college football experience at Ole Miss tailgating and everything number one place to go according to ESPN because I've been a lot of places and it might be because that place different. <laughs> mm. now, now going into the game is the atmosphere LSU blow it out Alabama blow it out Florida State blow it out Texas blow it out but outside. Being outside the stadium, ain't nothing like the Grove, Joe. You gotta go to the Grove one day. Oh uh, man, I got to man. You know, you know, I love that good old that good old Southern. Just that the whole Southern vibe. You know, I, you know, I just came from there, y'all. I just came from the South, and I'm a changed man. First of all, I want to announce that I'm not dating any woman in Indiana ever again. I'm done with y'all. My woman will be from the South. Whoever I marry, she will be a Southern woman of good moral stature. On the ba- he going to Baton Rouge where they full of COVID. Oh, you still? Were they thick? Um, Looking for him. I was actually, I actually was going to mention the whole COVID thing at the random part of our of our episode, and I'm, I'm I I just wanted to briefly touch on it. But I'm gonna tell you like this: you can end up with ju- with with Coach Judge. Who this man think he is with that good old Southern football mentality? <laughs> Somebody lined up wrong, and you ran them boys like they was in uh, Metro football, Little League football, high school football. They ran us like we was at Prentice. Yo, Joe, I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> What's that all about, man? I mean, I make I make twenty million dollars a year. I know you didn't make me run. Yo, he didn't just make them run. He made the defensive coaches run for putting the wrong play. In. <laughs> they had to run. <laughs> he made a defensive. Oh coach my gosh! Play. Special team coach, you are get you up there kidding me? Too. We ain't playing no games. What? Game. Yeah, player, y'all ain't the only one in trouble. They running with you. Was he doing this last year when it was kind of like a decent, okay team? I don't know. Like but... the Giants didn't make the playoffs, but they, like they were a dangerous team. No Saquon yeah. Bar- Barkley, Danny Dimes was okay, but Danny Dimes was he to doing? Say, we're we're hard. Hard. No, they said we fought this. We love this tough love. I'm like, okay. This is, I mean, that's that real football. Maybe somebody need to bring that kind of stuff back because it's all they talking about. It's all soft now. You can't do nothing. You can't hit nobody. Well, I guess it's where you get your toughness at is on the practice field where can't nobody penalize you. Run the ass. Hell yeah, run them. Run them. Hell yeah. Well, well, technically, in practice, you can get penalized. You can get kicked off the entire team. Okay. Uh, for instance, who? For instance, Carolina receiver Keith Kirkwood was taking takes an unacceptable hit. He gets hit late on a pass across the middle. By cornerback J- JT Ibe, who is now waived from the team. And by the way, prayers up to Keith Kirkwood. He had to go hospital. He got hit in the head, late hit, coming over the middle, practice squad player trying to make the team. Went complete dumb. As Matt Rule said, you can't tee off on people in practice. You you are a player trained to make the roster. This guy is a second string receiver. He actually gonna probably make the roster. You injured him. We don't know if he's coming back. You're off the team. So actually do have consequences. That's that's two sides of the coin because you know, A, you got the tough Giants coach right there, and then you got the I'm not gonna say the rule is soft because that's what practice is not to be out there hurting your teammates, yeah. man. I now, it's some cats. I remember back in the day. Some I never seen somebody go up the head in practice. Like you don't head hunt in practice. Man, some of them upper class when in my grade, like they they came from the like the Dick Buckus, not like you know that mentality. You know the two thousand people was 
uh, influenced by 90s and 80s football. But I'm going to say it like this here. So somebody hit me the wrong way in practice one time, and we went in that, we went in that locker room. We talked about that. You don't. And, and we left it at that because, because for what? I'm not out there to hurt you. Now, I'm not talking about trying to get a big hit. We're not talking about that. Because I've been, I've been, I got, when I was a freshman, I got smashed. I got hit so hard. Dirt flew up. I seen a guy next to me. I was playing fullback. Shout out to Jamie Bender. He work out coach. Shout out to my dude. He hit my boy Rob Brace so hard. I'm blocking for Jamie playing fullback because it was a random spring game. So I just played whatever position. We were just having fun, really. Because half the players was like on a track trip or something. He hit him. All I saw was Bray feet flip up in the air. He did a backflip after getting ran over. And I'm like, that's what I'm talking about. But what he did, if you go back and watch it, he, the ball already passed. Why are you teeing off on a dude in practice for no reason? He got kicked out the team. Simple as that. It's foolish. It's foolish. And that's and that's that's what's supposed to happen to you. Bro, um, you gotta be smart. Now, it's people be like, he just tried hard as he could because he's trying to make the team. IQ going to make no, the team. No, no, too. no, no, no. IQ. I need no. smart football players. You know what that is in the league? That's a penalty. You lost me. Or, or make yards. that play. Make that play in the preseason game. Do that in the preseason it's game, and then let's go from there. I don't need stupid that's, penalties. No, I mean that's I mean that that's that's fine, but I'm saying if you're gonna do it, do it against the Washington Redskins. Yeah, I not, mean, I'm sorry, the Washington not football to team. Your own teammate, which now he's in the hospital, and now you like you I'm kicked off the team and he can't play. So I'm gonna to give you. An, I might I might give you another chance if you know you do that to the post. Like, hey man, be make smarter plays, but I enjoy your intensity. I might do it. No, you try to smack your brother. And we can't do that. But speaking of brothers, you know I love CNN and, and Cuomo, the Cuomo boys, man. What, Zell, man? What the hell is Andrew talking about now? So Andrew Cuomo, as my been- God, I love this. I, first of all, I want y'all to know this is my favorite segment when <laughs> Zell May starts getting on either the Seventy Sixers or not Seventy Sixers, Doc Rivers, or any any news anchor that he despises or or has a dislike for. So. Here it is. Can you put some kind of thing up here when we go in here? <laughs> Zell May's anchor moment and just go. Go. Well, it's not go. The, you got it. You got you, it's the wrong one. That's the wrong. Chris is his brother. I actually like I actually kind of like Chris. Andrew is the older brother of Chris. So Chris Cuomo is the CNN anchor. Andrew Cuomo is the governor of New York. So the governor of New York, brother of Chris Cuomo. You saw the picture in the title in the this in the title today. He essentially got accused of harassment to women. I don't want to say the word because you too picky. But he harassed women. He, according to one woman, he to a state trooper who was opening the door for him. He rubbed his hand across her stomach and moved it to her hip and walked off. According to his a secretary that he had. He touched her spine and rubbed it down her lower back, played with her hair, touching them in all kind of ways. Chris, I mean, Andrew, goes on television. This is my problem with Andrew. And says, maybe it was misinterpreted. Sir, she said you rubbed her. <laughs> I don't know how that's misinterpreted. Like, this ain't like. Oh, I just grabbed her hair by accident and it was misinterpreted. I, I, I grabbed her on her shoulder and it was, no, you grabbed her in places that you can go to jail for, sir. How do you misinterpret that? No, no. I'm very even handed. I don't care if you're liberal, conservative. I'm consistent. I don't have a. Maybe t- he was saying like good. Maybe he's saying like good game. Good job of helping open the door. So he did that, and then he just great, then, then great, he just went up there and just grabbed like this too at the top. <laughs> <laughs> like, so that's what he doing. We just we just good game, good game, man. Great, great secretary work. <laughs> Yo, apparently this dude do what consistently happened. Dude's a creep. People, some people picking his side because he a Democrat, whatever. Some people, the real progressive people ain't picking nobody's side in that because he's a man, whatever. But. This is insane. He needs to resign. Joe Biden today, the biggest story on CNN. They told me 5,000 times. Fox News told me 
didn't tell me this because it goes against their narrative they need and that's how the media acts so biden said yo you need to resign but he's kind of friends with him so he didn't say hey, i ain't say about jail i say you need to resign <laughs> but that's how this game work and yeah uh that's the news keeping that in mind um, well, you know, a lot of people be hemmed up, but nobody's ever been more hemmed up <laughs> in a situation in this than this passenger on Frontier Airline, where he said that quote unquote on a flight to Miami or from Miami, one of the two, but he 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 said that his parents were worth two million dollars. Um, he also did some Andrew Cuomo alleged things like uh grope a uh flight attendant's breast. He did that. Um, he did a couple of things. And he had the window seat, and it was a three-seat row, so I don't know how he was just d- doing all this stuff. But at the end of the day, a lot of the, the front, the, 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 flight, the flight crew, you, hey, you go for what you want. And the flight crew apparently took it upon themselves after he took a swing at one of them. Uh, they took it upon themselves to duct tape him to the seat. Um, so the aftermath of that is that flight crew was suspended and uh, there's a lot of backlash behind that because I feel like the flight crew did what needed to be done. They were unruly. And so my question to you is, what the hell is going on with all these unruly passengers on flights right now? What's going on? Can we can we shout out this flight crew? Let's give them a real yes, shout out. Yes, we do need it. Because as a passenger on the plane, I want you to understand, as a passenger on the plane, when somebody acts unruly, the plane stops, lands, and kicks them off. This flight crew said we ain't got time for that. People got to go somewhere. We, just we need gonna, to get to Miami right now. So we're going to tape him down and we're going to carry on his flight happily ever after. So shout out to them. Goes, so to j- goes to jail, by the way. He does go to jail for this. Yeah, so shout out to them for thinking of everybody else and not ruining my flight because I don't feel like stopping in Jacksonville. <laughs> <laughs> and wait an hour till y'all can convince him to get out the plane and call the police to come in. We don't have time for that. That's an hour. I need to be home. I thank shout to this crew. Frontier should be ashamed of themselves. Uh uh-uh. They need to I'm, be I'm here canceled. For, I'm here I'm here for that. Um I mean there's a lot of people that may or may not be ashamed of themselves um or be canceled maybe they should cancel frontier I'm not sure they definitely got to cancel a guy that got taped up but the baby I guess people say they want to cancel him. I guess they want to go ahead and, and, and tell the baby he can't perform no more. And he can't get on nobody's stage no more. I guess that's what they want to do because of some quote unquote homophobic remarks that uh that that don't fly in 2021 but they probably would have flew uh any time between the beginning of time all the way up until like 2013. So uh, with that being said, he got dropped from Lollapalooza, all these things, all from what he said in Rolling Loud. Uh, the LGBT community is saying that, that that he's just wrong and he attacked them. And the baby said, no, as he wasn't doing that. But, you know, they're mad about the HIV stigma that people are getting because, hey, if you have HIV... I mean, that's a lot to get into. I'm not going to talk a lot about it today because I have plenty to talk about it um, when we talk about it on what's new 99 coming this Friday, Friday. different time. We're going to show y'all something different. But but um, we're we just going to let you know that's the news and we'll talk deeper about it. Feel free to say whatever you want to about it now, Zelme, because my God. Yo, I already talked about it. I don't, being from the hood and hearing what he said, I don't think and he was thinking of that in that way but it don't matter what you're thinking pretty, not, pretty specific now, stuff no we're not we're not we're not talking <laughs> about now nah, i'm talking about one i'm talking about to the lgbtq community which if you don't think and you just say crap you can be thinking of something else but to the a's and thing he, he 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 did apologize for that first time and then this but that the to the lgbtq community he said something offensive. And I said in my podcast last week, sometimes it's a time to learn. And sometimes it's okay to take an L. Because once you fight, some L you fight will end up making you take a big L. They were about to break everything. But yeah, some fights you fight will end up making you take a bigger L. Am I not? Am I wrong, Joe? Is that... Trying to fight. I'm not speaking on that today. I'm not speaking on that <laughs> yeah, today because I need to I need to I need to sleep on that because I think that 
I think that like, no, nah, I'll, I'll wait on that, man. Uh, I, I, I think let's we'll have we can have a yeah, discussion, but and for, and learn. We will be canceled again. We will have a new a new <laughs> logo again when we are canceled for the second time. But that's fine. But go ahead. <laughs> But ultimately, all I'm saying is he's wrong. People felt offended. People have the right to feel offended. People have the right to feel the way they felt. If they felt attacked, they felt attacked. So when you feel attacked, you apologize. You take the L, even if you didn't mean it, you take the L. And you could be thinking of something else, but that doesn't matter because at the end of the day, people were harmed, hurt, felt a type of way. And responsibility of a person is to be careful and thinking on that. And I got a whole thing about from the Boosie, the culture aspect. We're going to talk about that Friday. So like, and subscribe if you want a full detail. Cause some of you might be like, Oh, he's trying to defend the baby. I'm not. I actually just said he should take a learn lesson from it, but we're going to go break it down Friday. So be the, it's going to be fun. Yeah. Yeah, man. Come there. We'll have, we'll have a deep conversation about it. Cause and I, I think too, that in hip hop, how we need to fix it. And how? What? Well, well, yeah, that, it, we we it, it'll be a good one. Make sure y'all tune in, man. Make sure you like, subscribe, f- f- hit us up on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, we everywhere. You already know the deal. Um, so sometimes, so sometimes rappers say stuff where they beefing with a whole culture, and then sometimes they have uh where they're beefing with just each other, and I wouldn't call it a real beef, but you got Lupe Fiasco versus Royce Royce the Five Nine. They actually have. A podcast together, hey, but it's over it now. But th- they decided to both come out with diss tracks with random ass titles because that's what they do. <laughs> the, the, uh, Lup- Lupe's was like something random, like uh, Steve Jobs, yeah. and then and then um, Royce the Five Nine he came out with uh, Silence of the Lambda. Like they're just. Uh, I'm tired of smart dudes always trying to be smart all the time. But anyway, they're like kind of in this like I feel like it's a fake beep and it's all in fun. But what you think about that? What you think about Lupe? I love Lupe. That's my favorite rapper. I don't even check for Royce Five Nine, uh, but Lupe he comes from the Kanye ilk and all that stuff. So of course we love Lupe, and he also made anime references in his rap. So yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Silence go. of the Lambda was more of a technical rap to show I am a rapper. I'm better than y'all at rapping, and this is a rap song where it's real technical. A lot of puns, a lot of play on words, a lot of stuff like that. Really dope. If you like lyrics, very dope song. Steve Jobs is a reference to what Roy said in the song. Basically, Russ was saying, we the cool kids, you the nerds. Steve Jobs is a nerd. So Lupe referenced Steve Jobs. That's for the people who don't want the technical. He referenced Steve Jobs, and the reason he referenced him it said, cause Roy seemed to have all the answers. So he's Siri. But what is Siri without Steve Jobs? And I was like, see, that's why this dude different. No, we, I, I 100% rock with Lupe Fiasco. That's yeah. that's that's where I'm at. He's in my top 10 for sure. Royce yeah. the five nine doesn't crack my top. I don't know, cause I've never thought of it. Royce is nasty at rapping. Like I said, that, that t- Silence of the Lambda is a technical rap spectacle. If you're in the lyricist, that is handwritten gold right there. So no discredit to him. But I see a lot of New Yorkers like Russ going, Russ is going to destroy him. They don't want to know who Russ is. I'm like, bro, in hip hop, in hip hop, in hip hop overall, Lupe right the head of Russ. I know, I know y'all listen to the New York podcast who, who are friends with Royce and Eminem, who's friends with Royce and all these people telling you that Royce is nice. But when do you ch- when have you ever checked for Royce? And there's no hate for Royce because I do, but I'm a hip hop nerd, so I'm different. I, and I don't. And I don't. Like if you go look at his last one, um, Book of Orion. I think that I want to make sure I got there. I think it's Book of Orion or is Osiris? Is it Book of Osiris or Orion? But he put on a plan. Book of Ryan. Yeah, Book of Ryan. That's a. That's a that's a great album, by the way. So I would suggest you look, he's a great rapper, but if we go into the annals of hip hop, Lupe, Food and Liquor is a classic. Man, and do, unfortunately, do, do made lyrical songs that were mainstream. Yeah. And he was even considered 
when he said he can out rep Kendrick, I said he could. And I agree with Lupe, but people considered it. If Roy said I can rap with Kendrick, only certain very few people would consider. And that's people that mostly rock with him. And let's is, not forget he rocks with he rocks with Loaded Lux and Murder Mook and all them. A lot of freestyle uh rap battle legends, if you will. We don't necessarily gotta be freestylers, but rap battle legends, he rocks with a lot of those guys that are very good lyrical guys, because that's what well, it takes Mickey to be. Mickey Fox is one of them, and he at least Wraith and Wraith was Wraith was nasty. I know Joe Button and him tried to play it down, but that was a nasty. That was nasty. And plus, if for the people that don't know. Like I said, most of the song with Royce was a little play on words, calling them nerds. And Lupe said, since you the cool kid and you can bring all the, the why don't you go back and take what them white people took from us? Since I'm I'm the dude, white I'm the black dude that white that love white people instead of black people. Why don't you go and do it and take it back since you the dude that can bring all the thugs out? And then he said, nerds run the world. Gangsters scared to punch the police. By the way, that nerd line, remember that because we're going back to that Friday. I'm going back. That's going to lead to that last subject. So, yo, I'm hyping up Friday. Hopefully, Joe get something special for y'all. So, I'm hyping up Friday. So, let's go. Um, and, 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 and before we get out of here, I just want everybody in New York City that came out for the verses. Locks versus Dipset. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Dipset. 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 I'm a deep I'm deep set all day long. We love Cameron. We love luxury rap. We love it. Uh, but he was Rick Ross before Rick Ross. We love it. But um, um, everybody in New York City, make it home safe. They just let out. So everybody be cool tonight. Y'all be cool. Everybody in Madison Square Garden right now from Mello. all the boroughs. Y'all be safe. Shout out. Mello was there. Um, also, we just had. I, they put on a show. They took it back to those 2000 concerts when 2000 people was on the stage at once. Everybody brought their crew. We love it. We got to see Joel Santana come back. We saw Jim Jones on stage again. We saw Cam. Um, my thoughts on who I think is the winner. I'm going to say it has to be Dipset. And we know that when it comes to the locks, Jada kisses the locks. Let's just leave it at that, okay? <laughs> Yeah, man, we in, it's a, it's, it's what it is, bro. <laughs> that was a lit show, man. It was exciting. So, oh, yeah, and no thoughts on it, Jimmy. Yeah. Now, now, tell us where you stand. What type of nigga is you? Sure Dip set or locks? What type of nigga is you? Bro, I'm always rock with Cam, bro. Man, see, I, I knew you was a stand-up guy. I knew you was a stand-up <laughs> guy. Oh, we just both keep hitting our stand, our microphone stands today. We need some like float or something. Jesus, yo, bro. What man? Hey, that's another episode of Keeping Ninety Nine, man. Uh, we 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 just we needed to get our hands together. We need to enjoy our birthdays. We need to just get, just come back. We need to go to Fourth Avenue in Jackson, Mississippi, and see all those beautiful women, and let us know what we working for. All uh, right, anything else to take us out because this is Unico Williams and I'm done with Keep It 99. Another episode. We keep doing this. We're going to change the data. We just want to see what's going on. But check us out on Friday on What's New 99. It's going down. Don't forget, what's we always going to have an episode. What's that we always going to have. It's going to be lit. And, you know, just keep your eye out. Turn the subscriptions on so you know when I come with Have You Heard. Because if I hear enough gossip, I'm coming on here. I got to ask you, Have You Heard? So, May, what you got, my man? You know, you got to keep on stomping. Because have you heard? Do you hear me? Keep it 99. What's new 99? What's the trend? Monday morning quarterback. Backseat gaming. Backseat gaming any day. Because that's when I figure what's, what's new now. All that stuff. But we we popping up, man. Just kept Zell Reacts coming at the end of the month. Joe got a surprise. Hopefully, uh, we pray. We're hoping for it today. Joe got a surprise for you. Friday show. So we hoping for it. And we'll see. And Friday show should be fun because we we hinted at the whole show. <laughs> Almost we hinted. Yeah. Down. You know what? I think I think I'm doing Hennessy for this one. Oh, okay. Uh oh, getting lit. Uh, but it's gonna be a fun one. I, Hopefully, Joe I, don't I get think I, canceled by the Nigerians. Been there, done that. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
I, uh, I, I, I hit me up the other day. I was like, bro, that for real, that's what you mean. I thought we was better than that, but, <laughs> but, uh, no, man. Hey, thank you for tuning in to another episode of keeping 99. Do they, do they need to be doing something? What do they need to keep on doing? I feel like we need to keep on doing something. Zell, man. What do they need to do? Bro, they got to keep stomping. Why? Cause you never know. You might can overcome being canceled. You might become a Lakers fan and your favorite player win a championship after 18 years. <laughs> <laughs> and I and I stuck with him all 18 years because I kept stomping and hopefully this time next year, I can say after my birthday, I'm gonna get out the mellow jersey. All of them, the blue one, the white one, the authentic one. Had the little championship finals logo on the heat jersey and just be like, hey, I'm gonna untouch it and put it on the like the jersey. And then something amazing that happened. Peace. Peace. <laughs>